Welcome everyone to Deep Waters. We take a deep dive into the biggest problems, issues, fights in professional boxing. Today, we deal with one of the biggest problems. Fortunately, I have the partners to help me out. I'm Jimmy Smith alongside Chris Algieri, Polly Malinaji, joining us remotely. It reared its ugly head again last Saturday. Big fight with questionable judging. Paulie, I got to ask you, man, explain it to me like I'm a little kid. The standards here. We had one judge saying Sebastian Fundora was head 8-4 to four in a fight. Tim Zhu, 8-4 to four on another judge's scorecards. That's an eight-round swing by two trained professionals. What is going on here? You know what, Jimmy? I I'll tell you, in a fight like that where there's so much blood, I, I, I tell you, I it's I'm not so crazy about the differences in scores. There are some fights where they're subjective, but my issue mainly was the the judge in the co-main event who kind of sneaks out the back door because Pitbull Cruz ends up getting a stoppage, so nobody really brings it up and nobody makes an issue out of it. However, that there was a judge that had Roley Romero up in the fight at the time of the stoppage. I don't think Roley Romero won a second of that fight. You know, so so the fact that one judge had Roley Romero ahead in that fight was a bit disturbing and it would have been more disturbing had that fight gone to the cards but it that like i said that judge managed to sneak out the back door because you get a stoppage and nobody brings it up but it is a consistent thing and these are the kind of judges who impact decisions for the fights that do go to the decision you know and so um how do we fix it i mean i don't know man i mean i feel like there's I personally myself think the judges are on the take. I personally, I, I don't think a guy who watches that many fights can be that stupid um, or has worked in the business for that long can be that stupid. I personally, my opinion is that there are judges that are on the take and they and they can be on the take in different ways. They may get money under the table the old fashioned way. They may get flown in on first class flights and put in five star hotels. I've heard through the grapevine things like hookers given to these people, you know, great fancy dinners. I don't know, whatever it is, you know, again, I, I could go on and on and on in terms of the theories. One thing that's not a theory, one thing is a fact, though, is that there's judges who pretty consistently make some horrible, horrible decisions. And I am not sure if something has to change in this judging style, the 10 point must system, the way judges are positioned, or if there's a criminal element, like I said, and, I, and they may be on the take. Chris, you know, when you think about it, those are the choices, right? You're either incompetent or you're criminal. Or it's like that's what we're faced with when it comes to judging. What are your thoughts on it? Is it just the human element that isn't involved in other sports? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a different look because Napoli obviously went with potential conspiracies and controversies that way. I'm, I'm going to go with what you said in terms of, you know, their ad ad adeptitude to boxing. I don't know if all these judges who are actually watching the sport really know the sport. I, and I don't know if their preparation... Uh, for what it takes to become a judge is really that rigorous. Also, is there any kind of continuing education credits that go involved with that? What, what, what's to say that this judge is still as good as he was when he first started? What's the, you know, if he is actually clean or he or she or whatnot. But also, there's no consequence. This judge who had Roly, uh, Roly Romero ahead, he'll be on the next show. He'll be somewhere else. The, 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 there's no slap on the wrist. There's nothing. Um, and, and that's one of the things I think. I think there has to be some over, uh, overseeing body to look at these and be like, yeah, I, we, you got to explain this scorecard at least to, to, to the governing body, to somebody. Um, and I don't mean governing body in terms of the WBO or whatever the, the, the title is. Um, I mean, there needs to be some, something overlooking the, the judges and how their scorecards come about. And then also, like I said, continuing the education, making sure they're up to date. Um, spending some time in gyms, I think that's really important um, to, 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 to be involved with the sport at the ground level. Because a lot of these guys, they come and go, they work. And there's, there's nothing. The fans don't know where they're going, what they're doing. Um, we don't know what the criteria is to become a judge. Uh, we don't know what happens to them when they do have a bad scorecard. Yeah, they probably don't get as, as a much high-level um, cards for the next couple months, but then they're back. It, it's a very small talent pool. So uh, there has to be something overlooking. Or there has to be some kind of oversight to make sure that these guys are doing the right things, not only fight night, but also in between fights. Let's talk about pool. Right, you said about the talent pool of judges. What about diluting that pool? That's a a, 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 a solution to the situation that's been addressed by a few people. Mauricio Suleiman says that might be a solution, adding five judges instead of three. Of course, uh, Pro Box's own Gary Jonas has talked about that. Would basically expanding the pool of judges for a given fight would that help? Well, I think it goes to both our points, uh, Paulie and myself. If <laughs> if three judges can be corrupt, if two out of three can be corrupt. And three out of five can be corrupt. Just more expensive, right? Yeah, exactly. It's just gonna—it's gonna be—it's gonna be more money out right. under the table. Or if they're inept, okay. So 
uh, are we doing anything to make sure that they actually know what they're doing, or are we just going to have more people who don't know what they're doing? So I, 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 think, I think it goes beyond just the amount of judges who are actually there. I'm not opposed to more judges. I think it, you know, more eyes could be a good thing. Um, I, it's also, that needs to be field tested. Like, uh, Mauricio Suleiman's talking about having this uh, for the Usyk Fury fight. I don't think we should introduce something brand new on a fight of that magnitude that so many eyes Small are Small fight, nobody's watching. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No consequences at all for that. Why not start something new with that? Exactly, exactly. So I, I think that the, the systemic problems need to be addressed before we make some uh, massive changes in terms of how, how judging is done. Paul, yeah, what, what I'm is, curious about, when you talk about corruption in judging, would yeah. adding more judges to where maybe, you know, we're joking around, but, you know, would you have to buy five? Would you have to buy six? Would it, would, would it kind of make it more obvious that something's going on, in your opinion? Well, that's the thing. I mean, you, you, you would have to buy more judges. So it would cost you more money or you would have to take care of. And I, again, I don't know if it, it's actual money that gets uh, exchanged. It could be favors exchanged. It could be a lot of things exchanged. You know, I've, I've heard a lot of things in this business. Trust me. So so I don't know. Again, you, you're theorizing, but there's a lot of things. That, those things don't just pass themselves around the business for no reason. Obviously, there, something must be happening. Either way, though, we uh, uh, the champ Chris mentioned uh, uh, an over a body overseeing this. The problem is the people that oversee it also need overseeing, and that's where you have a problem here. You know what I mean? Because really, the commissions are supposed to oversee this. The commissions barely get, get, just give slaps on the wrists to any of these. Yeah, but that's the thing, uh, Paul. They have, no, they have no teeth. They have yeah. no teeth. They can't. They so, can't bite the promoters so, or the so or reality, the judge. Yeah. So in reality, who who ends up having to police the commissions is the actual state, the governor of the state. And how many states have a governor who's actually a boxing fan and cares about this? You know, I've seen myself a, early in my career in New York when there was a little scandal in New York when a fighter named B. Taven Scotland died in a fight and some medical things hadn't been taken care of, uh, which has happened several times in New York, mind you. But I remember the whole commission got switched over. Every time something like this happens, the entire commission gets switched over. But when a bad decision happens, no commission gets switched over. Nothing happens. Or only when somebody gets damaged badly, which can happen actually naturally, unfortunately. It's a part of the sport. Well, but because we, then we there's see, lawsuits. That's why. When, yeah, when there's money we, involved, yeah, that's when things can yeah, change. We, so we see revamping of commissions who actually may not even have even been that bad when somebody gets hurt, even though it's part of the sport sometimes, unfortunately. But when there's a horrible decision or, or just a, a, an egg on your face as far as something a referee did or a judge, judge did, nothing ever gets switched. And, Champ, that's a great point, probably because there's lawsuits. But regardless, what I'm saying is I can remember at that point in my career – the governor, I forgot what the governor of New York was at that time. I don't know if it was uh, Pataki or Spitzer. I don't remember. But either way, he was just hiring his friends. And the New York commission had a had a couple of years where the heads of the commission were absolutely clueless about boxing. And, and shows ended up out of New York. I remember I was, I'm a New York fighter having to fight in the Midwest for a few shows because it was really, it was so inept. It was crazy. So the problem is you need people policing the police people, which are you know, the people the, that run the commissions because they they have no teeth, like the champ Chris said, they have no teeth. So if you if these people have no teeth, somebody has to police them. And the people that are supposed to be policing them have so much else on their plate because they're governors of an entire state. They don't care enough to worry about the state athletic commission. And this is where you run into this problem. So the entire mechanism has to be blown up and restarted. You have to actually have a different model that you're using in, in terms of fixing the sport. Well, we've got a big problem. We've identified it, but there are solutions that we will discuss, including where to put judges when we come back on Deep Waters. Welcome back to Deep Waters. Jimmy Smith alongside Chris Algieri, Polly Malinaji joining us remotely. We're discussing Boxing judging, well, we already talked about the pool, right? Maybe a expanding judging from three judges to five. Another suggestion that has been made is get away from that hometown advantage. Put the judges themselves in a separate room, soundproof, headphones, taking the crowd out of it. First off, do you think the crowd is the factor when it comes to bad judging, or is it a factor? What do you think? It's a factor. I don't think it is the factor. Listen, judges are human. I get it. You know, when you fear the roar of the crowd... Maybe you didn't quite see that punch, but, you know, that, that, that's, that fan base went nuts. And a lot of times you see that in judges, and that can kind of sway how, how the judge may feel about that round. Again, they're human. They're, they're going to be affected. Also, something I think about is leading up to a fight. The, the impression going into the fight of, well, this guy's a big puncher. This guy's supposed to win. You know, the judges hear that, too. They're, I would assume they're boxing fans as well. It's funny. We call them judges, but it's more like they're jury. Because they're they're there and they they're decide your fate. 100%. Exactly, right. they're deciding exactly. your fate. But also, like in, in jury selection for like a big murder case, they're earmuffed. They're not allowed to listen to the news. Listen, these judges are listening to boxing news. They understand, you know, what the landscape of the sport is. So that's going to have an effect too. They are human. Um, but in terms of putting them in a different room, man, 
Call me old school. I'm, I think you got to be able to see the punch. You got to be in the room. You got to feel those shots. When you're really close to a ring, for the, you guys who've never been to a, a ringside fight, I mean, it's different. The way those punches land, everything looks faster, more violent, uh, pe- you know, more power. And I think that that's that's hard to get across on TV because I've been to plenty of fights where I've watched it live, thought one thing, and then gone home and watched the replay and thought another because it just didn't look the same way. So I do believe they still need to be in the same room. I understand the arguments for having outside, you know, uh, outside eyes or being away from the crowd. Um, but in terms of the crowd itself, man, just be a professional. You know, be block it out. Focus on the fight. Get lock in there. You know, you got to be like a horse with those with those uh, those eye things on there, keeping you keeping you focused. Um, blinders. That's that's the word I'm looking for. Um, having those blinders on. If you just focus on the uh, on the sport at hand, we've been doing it for you know how, however long. Obviously, it's not working. But <laughs> but I think that you need to be in the room. That's just my old school thought about it. Paulie, how many times we've we been at fights where you know you and I have talked about it? Where man, didn't look that bad. You weren't there. You didn't see him take that body shot. You didn't mm-hmm. see the way he reacted. How much of a factor is that to you? Is it worth taking that away to have his have judges isolated, Paulie? What do you think? Yeah, I, I have heard that, and sometimes I think it's an excuse, and sometimes I've, I think it's you know it could be real. Like I can remember a Shane Mosley versus Oscar De La Hoya too, where on TV it looked like uh, uh, one guy won, and then and then uh, in, in, in reality the decision was given to uh, look like Oscar De La Hoya won, and then in reality the decision was given to Shane Mosley, and everybody I talked to that was at the fight was like, no, nah, you didn't hear those shots, those shots when Shane was putting uh, a lot of mustard on them or whatnot. That that was the right decision. So I have heard that. Um, and when it's a judge telling me that, I'm skeptical because I feel like they make excuses. But I, in that particular fight, I heard a lot of people that were actually present at the fight tell me that. So there is a, there is a, uh, there is an avenue to justify what uh, the, what Chris the champ is saying. You know, I mean, you gotta kind of sometimes be in the room. I got a couple of ideas. One is probably less likely, and one is you know one of our hypo- hypothetical uh, experiments, right? So my my less likely uh, scenario, which I, I personally like, is you take every judge in the world, you, th- you know, first you need a separate island. You need an island for themselves. <laughs> and then you take every boxing judge in the world and you put them on this island and they live there and they don't, and they and they all live among themselves, just judges. And when you have a big fight, you fly, you go take a, you take the chopper or the plane and you fly them into the arena and then you get, take them back afterwards, you know? And, it's a and this the way judges. they stay I like away this. from, I like this. they stay away from all the media hype. They're, all the media's blocked. They have no signal over there. So all the media's blocked and they cannot be bought by anybody because they're on the island all the time. And we'll call it, the island that will be called judges. We'll call the island ju- the island of judges. Okay, that's probably the less likely scenario. We're probably not going to be able to do that, unfortunately. Paul, but- uh, other than like Escape from New York, which is essentially what you're <laughs> suggesting, everybody yeah. on island walled up in there can't get. Yeah. By the way, great movie. Don't judge me. Look, Chris, I love it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> the other way to look at this is, you know, here at ProBox TV, you know, you talk about even matchups, and you and I have discussed this, yeah. you know, uh, uh, you know, behind closed doors. You and I are like. They're even matchups. Let's face it, judges, fans aren't necessarily used to there not being a strong A side and a B side that we know why they're brought in there. Is that something that may be throwing judges off? Judges aren't used to all entire cards of evenly matched fights. Right. You have to work harder as a judge when even ma- evenly matched fight to try and find out. It's those little nuances, those little adjustments, that, that, that little 1% that makes a difference of who gets the round and who does it. So you, you really have to watch intently. So that, an idea that just popped into my head about that is being able to, you know, funnel out those judges. A lot of times on these smaller shows, it's the same judges all night long. They're working yeah. fight after fight after fight. Um, it's at the highest level, and that's not the case. But, yeah, when you're watching evenly matched, highly, highly competitive fights, it's a lot more difficult to judge. I know that even being an announcer. Paulie and I are watching some of these fights. It's like, who you got having? I, mean, I haven't really been watching it like a judge. I've been watching it like an announcer. I've been watching it like a commentator. i um, watching it like a fan. A lot of times watching as a fan is completely different than watching as a judge. You need to watch every, every step, everything that's happening. So, yeah, when you have evenly matched, fights are highly, highly competitive the way we do on ProBox TV. It's a much harder job for these judges. Well, when we come back, it isn't just about the problems. It isn't just about solutions. It's about motivations and why boxing needs to get it together. Get it together quick when we come back. Welcome back to Deep Waters. Jimmy Smith, we are discussing judging here on Deep Waters. Now, Right now, in 2024, you cannot watch any sporting event at all without being bombarded for ads for what? Online gambling. Could this be, Chris, the motivation boxing needs? Now, people have always bet on boxing, but the idea that now that it's so widespread, now that it's so legal, now that there are billions and billions of dollars going into it, this problem needs to be fixed. 
you know, gamblers don't want to bet on something that may be spurious at the end, where I put my money in, my guy won, he didn't get the nod. Could this be the, be the motivation boxing needs? Well, I mean, it's the reason I don't bet on fight sports, because <laughs> anything can And happen. you are a better position uh, than anybody, exactly. right? Exactly. As yeah. close as I've been, I know how, how, how wild it can be. It's the wild, right. wild west when it comes to this kind of stuff. But motivation is a really interesting point. We talked about earlier, it's like, oh, when do these guys finally make, make an adjustment? When, do, when, do, when does the, the commission get fired? When someone gets sued because of money. And gambling's about money, so there is there is going to be motivation based on the money. And we say, follow the money, man. If if you if we can use gambling and the betting lines as a, a reason to find motivation to actually make some sweeping changes, this could actually get done. Otherwise, it's just us spinning our wheels, saying like, oh, for the good of the sport. Right. But but again, like like the champ Paul Nazi said earlier. If you have all these different organizations, do they really care? Do they really have any energy to put towards that? Do they really focus on these kinds of things? Do they focus on boxing at all? But gamblers do. Boxing, is there's money to be made there. When there's money to be made, that's when changes happen. Now, Paulie, gambling has been traditionally 50, 60, Frankie Carbo days, the corrupter of boxing. Can it be its savior in this century? What's your opinion? Well, that's the thing. I mean, it was uh, the corrupter. Why? Because the alleged bad guys were the ones running it. Now, supposedly, the alleged good guys are running it. No, not necessarily. It's all in how you frame it, right? I mean, obviously, boxing is still run by bad people because it's still very corrupt regardless. Um, you know, it's, it takes me to my other my other uh, idea that I had. Yeah, obviously, the island of judges isn't going to work, guys. You know, we're not going to be able to do that. So my other idea is also, you know, putting these noise-canceling headphones on judges and maybe putting them – I, I personally like to be in the arena, but maybe the noise-canceling headphones, or at least the, the, the arena-canceling headphones for the crowd and maybe just the mic'd up – uh, part of the fight where you hear the punches landing for the judges um, and then they can decide themselves what landed cleanly what landed on the arms and whatnot um, maybe where they're seated the positions of where they're seated could change and alternate every single round you know uh, they, they switch seats like musical chairs every single round you got three judges okay the round ends the fighters go sit down the judges go to the other side of the ring and switch and that way the angle constantly changes for the judges along with noise canceling headphones again they're just ideas but you got to fix it if you're going to put the gambling in there because the gambling is going to bring more money into the sport that's why they have brought in legalized gambling into all these sports listen it's all about the money but there's greed everywhere in the world today right so the if you're going to have include that part in boxing you got to fix the the scoring you got to fix the judging you got to fix the ineptitude or, or possible corruptness i'll give you an example um lines are are moved by betters. Betters themselves move the lines. Okay, so betters themselves, whichever way the direction is going, is typically the way a guy who's supposed to win is going to win, and a guy who's going to supposed to lose is supposed to lose. Typically, it goes that way because the mar the, the the buying public, the betting public, enough of them. There's not enough of there's not enough stupid ones to move the line in the opposite direction, right? So if your guy is pretty much supposed to win the fight. Most of the money is going to go in his direction, and the line is going to reflect that. So you think about something like, you know, Haney Lomachenko, for example, going into round 12. I, I said this back in the, back when it happened. Going into round 12, you know, Haney went, uh, 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 Lomachenko went from a, a, a minus favorite to, uh, uh, no, was, was it Haney? Haney was, a, Haney was a plus 500 favorite. He went from a favorite to win the fight to a plus 500 underdog going into the 12th round. And then you got him losing, and then he ends up, and he ends up winning the fight. What I'm saying is it's just an example of several things. The lines move according to the way people are betting. If you're going to keep disrupting the way people bet, you're going to bring less money into the sport automatically. Unless you got the real degenerates who are going to bet minus 1,000 favorites and put tons of money on the minus 1,000 favorites. Otherwise, you can't really Still plenty win. of those out there, Paulie. Still yeah. plenty of those. <laughs> yeah. You got plenty of those too. But what I'm saying is you get less gambling. You, yeah. you think about how much gambling the NFL gets. Think about how much gambling the NBA gets. And don't get me wrong, I think there's corruption there too. Like all of a sudden, every NFL game is very competitive because if there's a blowout, you know, the, the, the gambling is less, right? So every minute by minute, second by second, there's constant gambling. So, you know, the competitiveness of everything. It's also It also it improves the need to make constant competitive fights. And when you have constant competitive fights, it's like we were talking about. It's more difficult to judge them. And then when it's more difficult to judge them, you need real, real laser sharp judges who who not only are incorruptible, but also are sharp and know what they're watching. And I agree with what the champ Chris said. I agree. We our shows at ProBox TV. We make the most even matchups out of any network constantly, consistently. Dude, it's hard to judge our fights. I feel yes. bad for some of those judges. But then there's fights that you kind of know who won. Like the other night when Saracho fought Castillo and uh, uh, what was it, Marlon K Stalin Castillo, right? Yes. And, yep. and Saracho gets robbed. And I think for the most part, most people, unless you're Dominican or you know Stalin or personally you're his cousin or something, pretty much that guy lost the fight. You know what I mean? So you still got to get the right ones. 
And that could also be burnout, too many judges judging too many fights in a row. I don't know. You know what I mean? But either way, there has to be accountability, not just for the judges, but also for the commission, the head commissions. And also, the system probably needs a little bit of revamping. Well, we've talked about it a lot on this show. It's about accountability. How do we make it happen? Can we make it happen? We'll discuss that when we return to Deep Waters. Welcome back to Deep Waters. Jimmy Smith alongside Chris Algieri and Polly Malinaji. So, judges, they're the one part, probably the most important part. You, you, you said they're more than judges. They're the jury of the sport. You and I are in this business. We wouldn't know five judges walking past them, even though this is our life. Is that lack of accountability a problem? If you're in charge of boxing, how do you fix that? How do you fix judging? Well, Jimmy, you said the magic word, accountability, which I think if you look in the big boxing dictionary, that's not even in there. They don't even have accountability because there is no accountability in our sport. There's no one overseeing anything. There's no one. Like we, we keep talking about the teeth. There's no governing bodies that are taking care of this kind of stuff. If I'm in control, number one, I'm, sent, oh, listen, I'm a school guy. I'm sending all the judges back to school. They need to be in the gyms. They need to be around fighters. They need to, they need to be able to uh, study old tapes, see these different, different, different uh, fights and how these guys maneuver. Because I remember when it, terms of my, times of my career, I was like, I'm doing things with my footwork. These judges don't even know what I'm doing. I, I'm, I'm, they're not picking this up. i got to fight a different kind of way. And it did change the way I fought. And that's unfortunate that fighters got to think that way. Um, so I think, number one, getting these, these judges to be adept, being, being knowledgeable about the sport, being up to date, that's a big one too. Then next comes that accountability. We have to have some kind of oversight, some Something has to be able to be done for these judges that put that put in terrible scorecards. Who's overlooking that? What happens? There, there needs to be a systematic approach to how you deal with a guy who has Roley Romero up in that fight. He didn't win a round. Maybe Criminal. half a round. Hey, yeah, how, how, how do you have him up in the fight? What happens next? There's no accountability. There's no system. There's no approach to dealing with that individual. What happens now? We don't know. We're not going to know. And that's a problem. So I think I think one education, making sure that the judges are up to date. Number two, accountability, making sure that whatever they do put in is looked over very intently. All right, very quickly, Paulie, you're king of judging island, as you said it. How would you fix this problem? Uh, you got to have a national commission, I think. I think in the United States, you need one national commission with a responsible body at the top of it, maybe one key figure at the top of it, along with a couple of uh, short of shareholders. Paul, you're hired. You're um, the guy. You know, like uh, vi vice presidents, couple of vice presidents of the of the commission that also responsible, incorruptible. Um, for lack of a better example, somebody with the ethics of like a Teddy Atlas. You know, we may okay, not everybody's a fan, right? But you know what? You can't break Teddy. You can't buy Teddy. You yep. can't you can't corrupt Teddy. Um, especially when it comes to boxing. So I feel like somebody like that would have to be in charge of a national commission. Um, and then you have a couple of vice presidents underneath who also are are of the uh, are of the uh, uh, qualifications character-wise and, and intelligence-wise as far as understanding the sport. Some people say, oh, you got to put fighters to judge fights. I don't think so because I find a lot of judge, a lot of fighters are partisan uh, toward, toward their nationality or towards their, their culture and whatnot. And so I think they would judge fights uh, by, in a biased way as well, um, even Our though they know the boxing very, very well. Um, but I do think that uh, you, you just either way, you certainly need changes. And I think this a show like this was needed. And hopefully we're not, what do they call it, whistling in the wind, pissing in the wind, whatever it is. Hopefully we're not just doing that and somebody's actually paying attention and somebody's going to do something about it. But unfortunately, the people at the top of this sport make money the way they want to, and they don't want to change anything. And that's why I don't think anything's going to change. But that's right? why we talk about it. See if there's some kind of change. It's out there. It needs to be fixed. You heard our opinions about it. We know you have yours. See us next time for more stories in boxing here on Deep Waters.